today we are going to talk about our first module in science entitled Looking for the Right Material. Have you tried looking for things at home or in school to wipe the spilled water on the floor? Have you asked your mother what materials to bring on the beach to prevent you from drowning? This module will help you choose the best material to use in a specific task or activity based on their properties or characteristics. You will work on this module for one week. In this module, you will describe and classify materials based on their ability to absorb water. Compare the characteristics of materials which do not absorb water and materials which absorb water. Identify and classify materials that float and sink. And identify and classify materials that undergo decay. But before anything else, let us test your prior knowledge about what you will learn after this module. Answer these five questions. The direction is, read the questions carefully. Write the letter of the correct answer in the blank provided before the number. Are you done? Now, let's see if you can name the following pictures. Yes, these are solid materials. Correct, these are liquid materials. Very good! These are examples of gas. Do you remember your lessons in grade 3 on matter? What is matter? Matter is anything that takes up space and has mass. We can group them according to solid, liquid, or gas. We can describe matter through its properties or characteristics. Physical properties tell how the matter looks, feels, sounds, smells, and tastes. Get a 5 peso coin. Circle the words that describe its properties. For further knowledge about the characteristics, size is classified as thin, thick, fat, big. Shape can be square, circle, rectangle, and so forth. Colors are red, silver, blue, pink, and the like. Textures are soft, hard, smooth, rough. Sounds are soft sound or loud sound. Materials may also be grouped according to their ability to absorb water, ability to float or sink, and whether they decay or not. Why is it important to study or learn different materials and understand their physical properties? Physical properties decide how materials are used. We use wood or metal in making a bed or chair because these materials are strong and hard. Pillowcases and blankets have to be smooth and soft. That's why we use fabric and cloth. Can you think of another example that works well because it is made of the right material? Let's have an experiment. You will need coin, sponge, handkerchief, plastic spoon, cotton, tissue paper, basin, and water. Here's what you're going to do. Fill the basin with water and dip the rest of the materials in it for 30 seconds. Lift up each materials and squeeze them one by one on top of the basin. Record your findings in Table 1 and answer the guide questions. Table 1. Ability to absorb water. Guide questions are, in which materials did the water come out when you squeeze them? Are the materials heavier when wet? What do you think made the materials absorb water? Which materials did not absorb water? What are they made of? Did you have fun doing our first experiment? Now, let's try another one. This time, you will find out which materials float or sink. Float means to stay on top of the liquid, and sink means to fall to the bottom of the liquid. You will need a pail, water, empty water bottle with cover, empty water bottle without cover, coin, leaf, candy wrapper, stone, sponge, 
cotton, key, plastic spoon, metal spoon, and twig. Now, observe the physical characteristics of the materials. Drop the materials in the pail, half filled with water. Observe what happens to each material for 10 minutes. Group the materials that float and materials that sink. Write the names of the materials in the fish bowl. Are you done? How does it feel doing your second experiment? That's nice! Can you answer now these guide questions? First question, what happened to the materials when you dropped them in the water? Second, what materials floated? What do they have in common? Third, what materials sank? What do they have in common? Fourth, what materials are partly submerged in water? Fifth, why did the sponge and empty plastic bottle without cover float at first, then slowly sink after some time? Are you done, kids? Very good! Now, have you heard about biodegradable and non-biodegradable materials? Well, biodegradable materials are those that decay. Can you think of materials that undergo decay? Yes, kids! They are biodegradable materials. How about non-biodegradable materials? Exactly the opposite of biodegradable. They do not undergo decay. Examples are plastics, metal, and more. Do you know that we can make a compost out of these biodegradable materials? What is a compost? A compost is made by gathering decaying materials in a bin and let them decompose or decay for a period of time. Let's check if you can. Pick the materials inside the box that decay. These are used by farmers in making organic fertilizers to enrich the soil for planting. Write your answer in your notebook. Are you done, kids? Now, look at this picture. By using the graphic organizer below, group the hidden materials according to their properties. How is it? Did you find all the hidden materials? Great! This time, let me check your understanding. A. Look at the pictures. What materials do you need in the given situations? Choose your answer in the box below. Write the letter of your answer in the blank provided before the number. You may start now. B. Write down the proper label for each trash bin in the boxes. Were you able to answer all the five blanks? Very good! Let us remember that materials that absorb water are porous. They have small holes or pores that can take in or absorb air or liquid like water. Examples are mop, cloth, cotton, sponge, and paper towel. These are good materials for drying or wiping liquids. Materials that do not absorb water are waterproof and non-porous. They do not have holes to let the water in. These materials are usually made of plastic, rubber, metal, and glass. Umbrellas, rubber boots, and raincoats are good examples of materials that do not absorb water. They protect us from getting wet. Float means to stay on top of the liquid, and sink means to fall to the bottom. Some materials float and some materials sink. Some stay partly submerged. Different materials do not sink all at the same time. Some sink very fast and some very slowly. Some materials may float at first, but eventually sink as they absorb water. Materials that have the ability to decay are known as biodegradable materials. Leftover food, vegetable and fruit peelings, fish bone, dried plants, and dead animals are examples of biodegradable materials. Materials that do not decay are non-biodegradable materials. T. 
tin cans, empty wrappers, styrofoam, plastic containers, glass, and metal are some examples. Got it, kids? You are now ready to answer your post-test. Start answering now! Are you done, kids? Did you get a perfect score? That's great! Now, make a reflection by answering letters A and B on your notebook. You have successfully finished your first module! Until then, kids! See you on our next online video lesson. God bless you!